All right, what is this? We've got ourselves some modems. We got some old tech here and a little bit of new tech. So this video is gonna be about setting up your own dial-up networking server using real modems, real serial ports, real analog phone lines, but kind of cheating. The, the cheat device that we have today is this guy right here. This is the Linksys PAP2T, PAP2T. Um, I'll put a link to some of this stuff at least in uh, have something pointed at like eBay or something like that. So what do you need? Well, really mainly what you need is you need two modems, you need the voice over IP PAP2T box, and optionally a phone, an analog phone. And then if we pan on my messy workbench over here just a little bit, you can see that I actually have this already set up because the other thing you need is you do need a computer with a real serial port. You can use a USB to serial adapter as long as it produces enough voltage um, that the modem likes it and not all of them do. So I prefer to stick with real serial ports if the computer has it. Um, the motherboard in this computer is my old FreeNAS motherboard. It's quite slow. It's got like a 12 watt Cabini core AMD processor in it, something like that. And I think this has four gigs of RAM. So more than enough for what this machine is gonna be doing. And uh, yeah, so basically this computer uh, functions as a voice over IP controller using some Linux software called Asterisk. Uh, and it also uses uh, MGetty PPP to control dial-up networking and provide internet access to things that dial in to this US Robotics 56K modem here. So come with me, and we were gonna make this happen. All right, so how do you set up this mess? Well, uh, like I showed you before, we've got our PAP2T, we've got our two modems, we've got real serial ports and or at least real modems. You'll see what I'm talking about a little bit later in the video. And we have this guide here. The website is dogemicrosystems.ca. I'll have a link for this down in the video description. And this is the guide that I followed. For my particular setup, it wasn't quite perfect, but everybody's network setup is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, and some of these things you'll need to change if you're using a real serial port port versus a USB to serial adapter. So this is a really comprehensive guide. Uh, he talks about various hardware requirements. You need a Linux box, you need a hardware modem, not a Win modem. Um, and he talks about some of the other hardware that he used, like this weird Matrix MX modem. It looks really cool, but uh, I'm using something a little bit different. And then he talks about his USB to R32, RS-232 adapter, that sort of thing. And then of course, the key is that Linksys PAT2T analog telephone adapter. And of course, you're gonna need a computer on the other end uh, to dial in with. Um, this guide is for uh, Ubuntu 18.04, but I used Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and this guide has been exactly perfectly the same. So this guide should be good for a while still. And the three main components are PPP, Getty, and Asterisk. So he talks about choosing modem hardware, why you'd have a lot of trouble with a soft modem, talks a little bit about this, this cool Matrix MX modem thing he has, talks about the telephone network that you'll set up, and then here he talks about installing Asterisk. So he goes through installing it, you have to edit a config, uh, set up these username and password bits and these are going to match with what's in the Linksys config So you just need to make sure that you've got all this stuff that matches up. He doesn't really go into a whole lot of detail on this uh, It's just enough where you can figure out okay, you know display name and user ID needs DP pap 2 tisp modem and then the password is just password He shows it here. That's literally the secret. It's just password and then your SIP port, uh, that's one for each line. Basically, so line one's phone number, with air quotes, is simply 5060. And then line two is 5061. And you'll see on line two, PAP2CLIENT is uh, sort of the other line. So what I like to do is I use line one. That's hooked up to the modem that's plugged into the computer that's going to be the sort of server. And then line two uh, goes to whatever modem that's hooked up to the computer that I want to dial in with, like we all used to do back in the day. Uh, moving along here, uh, he talks about configuring asterisk. Uh, this all worked perfectly fine, and then he sets it up as a service. Shows you how to make sure it's working. 
Uh, if you if yours does not look like this, that means that the PAP2T device did not log in properly. Um, each line has a little green light on it on the PAP2T itself. If those lights are dark, that means that it could not log in. So I've got to make sure both of those lights are green. And he goes through some registration examples, successful call. Uh, this is where having a analog phone uh, is handy because you can pick it up. You'll hear a dial tone, which is just hilarious to me. I love picking up that old phone and hearing the uh, dial tone. One other thing to keep in mind that he doesn't talk about is when you go to set up the dial-up networking server, I'll probably mention this when we, get, when we jump on the computer we're going to dial in with, but uh, when you actually go to dial in, um, you need to end the phone number. The, 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 this is basically, again, your phone number, so this is the client, so you're going to basically dial 5060, and then when you go to set up the uh, dial-up networking on that computer, you basically want it to look like this. Um, I do it like that, uh, which just gives a little pause. That's what that means. It's, so when I go to when I go to actually dial, that's what I dial. Obviously, we're not going to put that in here. All right. So he talks a little bit about um, set up both lines, make sure they're registered with the appropriate usernames, and the password is password. Use the G711ULaw codec as it is uncompressed. He also talks about turning off echo cancellation. That's a setting in the PAP2T. Uh, he links to instructions on how to do that over on voip-info.org. Really great website if you're doing VoIP stuff. Uh, and then he also suggests to set the jitter buffer to be as small as possible. And uh, you'll see that in the, in the PAP2T settings in here. Just browse around, you'll find it. Uh, in fact, I think it's probably here under SIP in advanced. Uh, am I, why am I not logged in? Oh, I guess I am logged in. Anyway, it's in here somewhere. Oh, here we go. We're under advanced, and I thought there was a jitter buffer in here somewhere. But yeah, just look around for it, you'll find it. All right, now we need to set up the actual dial-up networking server. So he talks about uh, installing, you know, basically doing an update and upgrade. If you're familiar with Linux, you'll recognize this. This is a little older, so he does the older style of apt-get update. Uh, the newer style is apt-update and apt-upgrade. Um, and then he does a reboot, which may not be necessary, but it seems to, uh, you know, I follow these to the letter. And then here's where things change a little bit. Uh, since he's using a USB um, to serial adapter, uh, his device is TTY USB 0. That's his COM1 over USB. And then um, uh, you can even see it here. It, this, is, this is the one that he's, he's actually using. Uh, in my case, I'm using dev TTY. S0. The S is capitalized and these are case sensitive. Go Linux. All right, so then um, we go ahead and install PPP and Getty. He walks through uh, editing the Getty service. And again, right here, for me, I needed to change these to TTY S0. Uh, anything where it says TTY USB 0, I had to change to TTY S0. Uh, then he goes in here and he says um, configure mgetty by editing the etsy mgetty mgetty config setting up mgetty as a service um, now here's one area that i also had to change um, i found using this dns which i think is like a google dns or something like that didn't work for me and our network so i just used the dns server of our router so let's say you have a dsl modem or a cable modem and a really common IP for that would be something like 192.168.1.1 or .0.1. Um, you can set this to that IP address of your home router and uh, that will probably work. Um, and then right here, you have to create a device option by uh, editing this. If the, sometimes this file won't exist and you have to create a new empty one. Uh, this part was also kind of tricky because I needed to set up an IP range that was not this. I don't have nearly this many open IP addresses, and really you only need a few. You probably just need one because you're probably the only one dialing. It's just for funsies anyway, but I set up a few IP addresses that were all next to each other um, that were free and below the DHCP server of my router. Um, so my router is set up to start serving IP addresses at dot .50. Again, if you're a Linux guy, if you understand networking a little bit, you'll understand what I mean. Um, I also set up the net mask as a slash 25 just to try and make things as accurate as possible. It's still not really technically accurate the way I set it up personally, but 
it works. Okay, and then we create the dial user. This is so that PPPD has a local user to work with. And he walks through all that. And then here's where things get a little extra tricky here. Uh, he talks about setting up IP tables so that it can forward requests from the serial port to the internet. I basically found that this setting here, this one setting, was totally not needed at all. So I followed this guide here that he links to. I opened up the PDF here and we search for IP mask. Okay, so then I read all this and then I followed this guide here for UFW, which is the more current way of dealing with IP tables. And I found that setting up all of this stuff was really all that was needed. It, you see these, oh, and this stuff down here, NAT post routing accept. And then I basically left this out. So this is very similar to this setting right here. So I just personally left that out and it worked for me, it wasn't required. And then the last part here is he just talks about using an external modem and any problems that you might run into, especially if you're running like an older version of Debian, things like that, or if you have some trouble with your USB to serial adapter, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I found this pretty handy. I had kind of fumbled my way through it. I'm familiar with Linux uh, to a degree, but I'm definitely far from an expert. So, you know, if you're a casual Linux user, uh, you should be able to fumble your way through this like I did. So let's see this in action. Let's jump over to a Windows 98 machine with the built-in modem and give it a try, shall we? All right, we are back and we are booting up my Compaq Presario 1685. This was the first laptop that I refurbished. And uh, in some ways, this laptop was responsible for me starting this channel. Uh, somebody gave me this and said, hey, it's falling apart. Um, you can have it if you want it. And I said, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll take it. So here it is, and it has booted up into Windows 98. This computer does not have a ethernet card in it yet. That's another video coming up but um, it does have a built-in modem, which is pretty cool. So we're set up here, we've got my little, my little server thing here, we've got my audio recorder, which I'm gonna turn on here in a moment to record those delicious, crunchy modem noises. And then of course we have our US Robotics 56K modem here. All right, so in the upper right corner, you should see the asterisk log, and you should see it do stuff while the modem dials. So we're going to open up my 90s net dial-up networking and you can see from the guide my username is dial. I forget what I have the password set to. I think it's just password or something like that. But uh, the phone number is 5060 comma pound and this should still work. So let's give it a try, shall we? Okay, that didn't work. Great. <laughs> so yeah, it turns out that I apparently missed a step or something and MGetty wasn't running. So there was nothing to actually answer for dial-up. Uh, the SIP file, or uh, the SIP call worked just fine as you can see by the AA light here, which means auto answer, but it's not really enabled. So we got everything set up. We're gonna try it again. This is live. I have not tested this before recording. The last one failed and I, that will be in the video. But um, so I'm gonna start my audio recorder, which is sitting on top of the server, which has some kind of loud fans in it. But um, so you'll hear some fans, but you'll also hear some luscious modem noises. All right, so let's try and dial in. Actually, something more interesting is I have the MGetty log running now instead. Uh, the asterisk log really just shows like SIP connections and stuff like that. I think this one's a little more interesting. So you should see that in the upper right corner. Here we go.
Oh yeah. Connected to the web like back in the day. So it shows here I'm connected to 90s net. And if we run good old Internet Explorer, um, I have this set up as the oldnet.com's homepage. So you can see it's still loading. Uh, this is loading from cache because um, I have been to this website before, but even, even loading from cache, it still takes a little while to load, but it loads up just fine. Uh, so you can see here, we've got a nice big long website, lots of cool links. Let's go to new paintings for sale. Why not? And again, this is all filtered through the old net. We can bring up our dial-up networking. See that we are very slowly downloading. Um, we are connected at 31.2. Um, it seems to be about the speed that I always connect to here. So what is the use of this? What's the, what's the point of this? What can you really do with this? Quite honestly, not really a whole lot. I would say probably the most interesting thing you could do with this is uh, connect to a Linux box, which is gonna have modern you know, text-based software that you can get into, but you don't really need a modem to do that. But yeah, you can browse the web and um, you know, through the old net, it's reasonably safe. Let's see, what's this do? Any pictures in here? This is basically going through uh, the Wayback Machine, as I understand it. This is sort of a filter. So you can use old computers or old browsers or emulator, do whatever you want. And we are downloading very slowly. Man. Crazy times. This was all we had back in the day. Although if you had a 56K modem and you were connecting at 31.2 all the time, you'd be sad. Whoa. Pretty cool, man. <laughs> it's so slow. <laughs> but this is this is how it was done. This is the way we did it. You'd sit here and you'd wait for that picture to load so very slowly. Look at her rock those cat ears. You go, Julie Newmar. But I think one of the other interesting things to do is if you wanted to, um, you could set up email and that's actually something that I want to do with this is I would love to have it so that I can load up good old ancient Outlook Express, do some email on an old computer and be like, hey, I did email from an old computer <laughs> for fun. Um, but I do have a couple of really interesting projects uh, involving um, not Windows-based PCs. I've got a couple of portable compute devices that aren't necessarily computers. One of them is really interesting and really special. The other one is a fairly interesting and special Windows CE device, uh, which is pretty cool. And those both have built-in modems and those should work with this, I would hope. So yeah, that's it. We have uh, dialed into the internet with real phone line, phone modems and real serial ports to see a picture of Julie Newmar to Peter, who is apparently the greatest. Thanks for coming along this wild ride with me, and I uh, will catch you in another video. Keep it 90s, my friends.